Hello, and welcome to Boomer and Beyond Wellness. I'm Angela Fischetti. And today we're going to be working out together. We're going to be doing a total body or a full body workout. And we're going to implement the system referred to as supersetting. So we're going to be alternating two different exercises back to back without rest. Now, before I go any further, I need to advise you, please, to read the disclaimer that is attached to this video before beginning the program. If you have pre-existing issues, uh, cardiovascular issues, hypertension, if you have orthopedic concerns, if you have diabetes, any conditions for which you might be taking medication, please discuss everything first with your healthcare provider. Um, you may even want to get a scan done of your spine, particularly if you have osteoporosis. Always want to make sure that you don't have any what's called wedge fractures, compression fractures on the spine. You may not even be aware of them and you certainly don't want to do you know, something in good intent to get yourself started on an exercise program and then get injured. I don't know you personally, so I don't, I'm not sitting down going over my health client intake with you. So um, please, please honor yourself and uh, watch the video if you need to first, but be careful. I, I would appreciate that. Um, this said, it is not a dangerous program by any stretch. Anyone can do it. You can do it um, without any weight. So today I'm going to be using uh, free weights, dumbbells, and you could also do this in a gym with machines. You could use bands. You can use exercise tubing. We are going to be following the guidelines of ACSM, American College of Sports Medicine. So basically what they suggest is to do uh, perform eight to 10 compound exercises where you stress the major muscles. You do eight to 12 repetitions. And um, for those of you who are beginners, you wanna start with just one set. A set is a group of repetitions of each exercise. And if you're more advanced, you're gonna do two to three sets. Today I'm gonna do the three sets with you. And you wanna work um, you want to progress your work based on your own sense of resistance of the work. So if you find it gets increasingly easy, so it's no effort and on a scale of exercise resistance, a, a scale of zero to 10 with zero being no effort and 10 being the hardest effort, you want to work out between about between seven to 10 on that, on that scale. If you find you're at a five or a six, start to bring up the weight a little bit, the, res the sense of resistance. Uh, you can also use your own body weight too to do the work. We are gonna be focused on the compound movements that ACSM suggests. The reason why I chose this is because compound movements are multi-jointed, multi-muscled. So they reflect functional movement activities of daily living, ADLs. And um, other than that, I think we're ready to go. So let me just set the camera here for you. And we're gonna start off with what I'm gonna call umbrella squats. Now I have a little platform here because I really want you to see everything. It's a tiny apartment. So I did the best I could to create the proper space for you and viewing. So when you stand, you want to stand with your legs hips width apart. So here is the high pelvic bone on both sides. When you look down, you want to see with your hands if you have your ankles to your knees to the inside of the pelvic bone all lined up. So you take, now if you want to do this unweighted, that's fine. If you don't have an umbrella, you probably do, but just in case you don't have one handy, you could use maybe a strap or just hold your arms up and overhead. If you have any kind of neck issues um, or shoulder, like uh, rotator cuff concerns where lifting the arm overhead doesn't work for you, try the arms straight out in front, palms face each other, below the shoulder height. 
Here we go. I'm going to bring the arms up, checking my stance on the platform, and I'm going to sit back into a chair, and then I'm going to come up with a slight little pop at the top of the movement. You inhale down, exhale up. Inhale, sit back, exhale up. Good. Now, you want to make sure that the weight is going back into your heels because when you come up, you don't want any stress on your knees. You want the work to go into those extensor muscles. That would be back muscles, the gluteals, and the hamstrings. We're going to do one more. Sit back and take it on up. Hold. Bring it down. And now we're going to work the back. So you want to be able to bend down and pick up something heavy without getting hurt. This is a one arm row and I'm going to ape you. So even though this is technically my left hand, I'm going to say my right. So I'm stepping back on the left leg as if I'm starting an old fashioned lawn mower. I'm going to pull on it. One arm row. Back foot straight. I'm pushing the bench away from me as I pull the opposite arm. Exhale, pull. Inhale forward. Exhale, pull. One more. Exhale, pull. I'm going to lower down to the floor. Change sides. Left hand is on the bench. You could use a chair at home. Inhale. Exhale to pull. Back foot straight forward. Breath in and out. There you go. And exhale, inhale. Exhale, inhale. So always duplicating activities of daily living to keep us strong. Always pulling that belly button in. And I'm going to set it down. Bring it up to my bench. And I'm going to grab my umbrella again for the second round. So you see how this works. It's all back to back to get in as much exercise as you possibly can in a short amount of time. Here we go. Inhale, sit back. Exhale, up. So there's just that little pop at the top where you go, almost oh, doing a slight back bend. It's tiny. Good. And exhale. Duplicating activities of daily living, right? Every time we sit into a chair, we are squatting. So if you want to, you can do this standing in front of a chair as well. You can actually sit into it to stand up or not. You don't have to go all the way down. Last one. Inhale, exhale, up. Now we go back to the one-arm row. Right hand on the bench, left foot forward, exhale, pull. Start the old fashioned lawn mower. Some of you are too young to remember those. So I'm checking myself to make sure I don't push out into my right hip, which would be your left. Couple more, pulling. I'm working today with a 20 pounder. And down. Change sides. Breathe out. And you're gonna find one side of the body is stronger than the other. Doesn't always mean it's gonna be the same with each exercise. And you're going to find you get breathless. That's appropriate. You might start to sweat. One more. I'm bringing it to the bench. And one more round. Arms up. Again, if you want to do them out in front, that's okay. I'm going to sit back into the chair. Inhale. Exhale. Take the pop at the top. 
Now you go as low as you can, but you keep the chest up. You don't want to collapse all the way down. I'm sitting way back. I was so far back before I actually touched that wall behind me, my mirror. I'm lifting the toes inside my shoes. That's going to guarantee that I'm pushing up from the heels. And of course, if it's too low, you don't go that low. That's fine. Don't hurt yourself. One more round, one arm row. Here we go. Couple more. Stay in the breath. Always let the breath be your guide. Take it down. So during the pandemic, I got myself a bunch of home equipment, and I love it. And I've actually gotten stronger. And next month is my 64th birthday. I always want to try to get stronger. One more. There we go. Really great. Now, the next round, I'm going to take my 20s. We're going to do squats. Again, compound movement, activity of daily living. I'm going to sit back into the chair and then come up. Notice my range of motion. It is different from when I had no weight. Just so far I can go. Still with that little pop at the top. Now the reason why I'm doing that is because I want the lumbar spine at the low back to ape the cervical spine at the neck. They both do extension. We're going to go for three more. I got to watch myself keep my chest up. Now, I'm going to set my bench to an incline. And you can do this flat bench or not. I'm going to take 15 pounders this time. Wide grip. Now, how is a chest press functional? Well, when you're standing up and shopping, pushing a shopping cart, that's your pectoralis muscle, your front deltoid, your tricep muscles. But when you go into a store that has a super heavy door, and you gotta really put effort into pushing that open, that, my dear, is a chest press. So I'm gonna bring the legs up now because I live in an apartment building, I'm not dropping the weights on the floor because they will kick me out. Plus I'll crack my tile. Here we go. Taking the squats again. Inhale, exhale, push up. Feet hips width apart. Lower is not necessarily better, especially when you have the heavier weight. Let's do two more. Great. Putting the weights down. Chest press. Incline chest press, technically, but it doesn't have to be. It could be a flat bench also. You can lie down on the floor to do it. You can lie down on a big old um, stability ball. Pop 
puff up the chest toward the ceiling. Keep the chest puffed up toward the ceiling, especially when you push away. The tendency is to collapse. When I'm pushing toward the ceiling, pushing the ceiling away from me, keep that chest puffed up. One more. I'm bringing the weights to the thighs. Now, notice when I set a weight down on a surface that I crisscross the weight. They do roll off. They really do. One more round. And sit back. Inhale. Exhale. And if you're talking, then you know you're breathing. Just remember that scale of zero to 10, how much effort are you putting into this? Seven or eight, it's great. Hey, and if you've been really sleepy and you don't think you should work out, then don't. It's all right, you wanna be safe. You wanna be cautious. And we're going to do one more. Back to incline chest press. Keep the chest puffed up. So there's almost like a subtle, slight retraction of the scapulae, that's a little bit of those, your shoulder blades almost coming toward each other a little bit. Two more. This is one, and two. Legs up. There we go. Now the next round is going to be deadlifts and with military press, aka shoulder press. So um, before we do the round, why I'm bringing in shoulder press, military press is because in real life we put things away up in a closet, maybe we have an old box up there, we just keep throwing crap up into that, that box. And one day, particularly for women, we go to take it down and that thing crashes into us because it's just kind of heavy. So this exercise is functional, right? We pull something out of a kitchen cabinet. And also we bend down this way sometimes without thinking about it. That's a deadlift. So let's do it that all correctly. So the first one, let me come up onto my step for you. Now, this is different from a squat. Folks, this is the one. If you have osteoporosis and you don't know about any fractures of the spine, wedge or compression fractures, do not do it, okay? So, I'm gonna bend the knees and I am doing a hinge now from the hips. There's that pop at the top. The knees bend and all I'm doing is bringing the hands to just below the knees. Inhale back, exhale up. There's that little pop. So big time in that tush in your buttocks. Those glute heels, hip hinge. Just below the knee. One more. You can do it unweighted. Now, I'm going to lift the weights up, belly button in, knees soft. Now, a lot of times you'll see people doing this seated, but like I said in the beginning, don't do it if you don't have to do it seated because it's not functional that way. You don't grab stuff from the top of your closet sitting down. At least I don't think so. Unless you have one of those extender gadgets. One more. Easy on the down phase. Here we go, deadlifts. I'm sweating, kids. And my AC is on, but it is Miami Beach. 
So no excuses. You can work out at home quite efficiently. You've got lots of us on YouTube, all kinds of videos to refer to. I'm going to go for one more after this. Here we go. Last one. Careful in the transition with your weight. You may have to change the weight. You may have to do one, yet one exercise with a heavier and the other one with a lower, a smaller weight, I should say. Yeah, you can tell I'm working out. I can't talk right. Let's go for two more. Push it up there. Deltoids, triceps, biceps. Woo! And take it down. Last round of deadlifts. I'm going to step off the bench for a moment. The step unit, I should say, and show you from the side. That's the hip hinge. I'll face forward. One more. Up we go. Pelvic tuck, soft knees. Up you go with the arms. Been practicing this routine for you. My shoulders are shot. But that's good for me. Bring on the challenge. One more. Boom. I'm going to take it down, cross it on the bench. So the next round is going to be tricep and bicep. Mm -mm, right? So how do we make these movements? Like, why are they functional, right? They're assisting muscles for most of the compound movements. Well, think about it. If you go to close the trunk or hood of your car, tricep. And a lot of times I see people locally carrying their groceries home from wherever, Publix, Whole Foods, and they're, they're like this. And I'm thinking to myself, man, if you just bent an elbow you just brought in some other muscles to help you so that you can hang from here rather than struggling. And this way, you utilize your bicep. The other thing is that when you vacuum, right, forward and back, so when I go forward, this is tricep because it's extension, I'm going to go back, there's the flexion. That's the bicep. So that's going to be our round. Um, the first one we're going to do, I'm going to go for my lighter weight now. This is going to be what is called a tricep kickback. So I'm going to turn to the side, bend the elbows, look out in front. Now lumbar spine, low back, and cervical at the neck are doing the same thing as each other. I want to make sure my elbows don't wander around. You can practice this one unweighted, even if you work out a lot, but maybe you don't do this particular exercise. <sighs> Strengthen those tricep muscles. You're also involving the posterior deltoid at the back of the shoulder. One more. Woo! Good. Setting the weights down. Crisscross. Okay. Now, hammer curls for your bicep curls. Hammer curls, I'm tying in the forearms and wrists. These are osteoporotic sites. Now, a lot of you are too young for that and think, eh, I don't have to worry about that. Yeah, you don't, but you know what? When I was 60, I got diagnosed with osteoporosis, that of a 90-year-old. I had stopped lifting weights for several years, and I said, I know what I got to do. And I did it, and I reversed it to age-appropriate osteopenia. And there's a big difference between the two. However, I must keep working at it. One more. And down. Crisscross. Kickback. Tricep kickback. 
Now for some of you, you can go all the way down and do the kickback. You can do that. <laughs> Straight back. We're working on extension. Another way to do a superset, I'm going to face forward, is to work opposing muscles back to back. So right now, this is that type of superset with the bicep and the tricep. One more. Good. Crisscross. Hammer curls, just basically me. The palms are facing each other. I guess simulating the head of a hammer, right? Here we go. You can see that the sun, the position of the sun is changing from the reflection in my apartment. I have such a great view with just facing west. So lots of sunshine. That's why I came here for the sunshine. We got one more. Woo, mama. And down, crisscross. I think, yeah, one more round. Last round. I'll come up high here again. And knees are soft. Belly button is always pulled in so that you're engaging the deepest of your core muscles. That would be the transverse abdominis muscle. One more. And last round of hammer curls. And the breathlessness is a good thing you're shooting for. Shoulders back and down, knees soft, belly button in. Elbow is a hinge joint. We're going to do two more. Control it down. Now I'm going to set the weights down. Let me just move this over here. Because we do want to do a little bit for the abdominal muscles. Now I would invite you to the floor to do plank. However, my space won't allow that to be properly viewed by you. So I'm going to come on to the bench, rolling down, so making sure my low back is supported. Now I'm going to bring my legs up and I'm going to cross the ankles. I'm going to lift my arms and I'm going to curl up. But all I'm doing is pulling the belly button down. And then I'm going to re release a little bit reaching the wall in front of me through the fingers. Doesn't have to be anything elaborate. Now, if you have back issues, keep your feet down on the floor or on your bench. Let's do three more. I'm pulling the belly button so far down that I can feel it coming out the small of my back into that bench. Good. Now I'm going to lower the head down, uncross the legs, and I'm going to grab a hold of the bench. And all I want to do is tap toward the ceiling with my toes. It's not much of a lift at all, but it's a big internal pull from the belly button. Right, I, I was getting too much tension in my neck. So I just readjusted my arms a little bit. Let go of having to go super high and just place up there. And boy, is that engaged, that transverse abdominus. Let's do two more. And bring the knees in 
into the chest. Cross the legs. I'm going to crisscross the other. Keep the movement small. Keep it tight. Do not eat before you do crunches. One more. I'm crossing. Touch a spot on the ceiling. Keep it tiny. One more. Knees into the chest. Now, you would think I could go higher, right, after all these years, but I was in a car accident a few years ago. I got T-boned by an F-Doc truck, and so it's a little limiting, but that does not stop me. And cross the ankles again. Curl up. And no excuses. There's so many ways of working around issues. But the first thing to deal with is one's own mindset. Uno mas, one more. Hold, hold, hold. Slowly down. I'm going to uncross and I've got nothing left. So, um, if you tell me I do 12,000 crunches in a day, I'm going to tell you that not a one of them was a real crunch. You can also try it with the head lifted. I'm going to bring my head down. One more. Hold. Hold, and bring the knees into the chest. Hold there for the moment. Let that lower back release. Good. Stretch it out a bit. And so that's that. I hope that you enjoyed it. And um, if you are interested in possibly working with me, I do work virtually with um, both as a senior fitness consultant for personal training and I also do virtual hatha and virtual prenatal yoga. I am available on site in Miami Beach for massage therapy in particular for Swedish massage, geriatric massage and palliative care massage. And um, you can contact me by way of my contact form on my website and that's boomerandbeyondwellness.com. Once again, www.boomerandbeyondwellness.com. I'm Angela Fischetti. It was great working out with you. Drink some water, have a little bit of food, go for that smoothie. It's great for after a workout. Put your greens in there. Thank you. Take care.